NBC University of the Air, a public service of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations, presents another chapter in the historical series, We Came This Way. Tonight we hear the story of a boy named Carl. Liberty is like a great ocean, with many rivers flowing down to it. Sometimes the rivers start as a tiny stream, which widens and gathers momentum as it rushes on. Sometimes it gushes out of the earth in a great flood and sweeps all before it. We're in Victorian London at its most Victorian. The year, 1852. Dickens and Thackeray are in the flush of their first success. There are plans for a crystal palace, which shall be a permanent monument to peace, with exhibits of every nation's handicrafts and industries. In a flat in Chelsea, a party is in progress. But the conversation is in German, not English. Anything German, of course, is quite the vogue. For is not the prince consort, adored husband of the beloved young queen, a German? In the music room, a slight young man of 23, with quantities of wavy brown hair and the most penetrating dark brown eyes, is seated at the square piano fort, his fingers flying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, something from the homeland now, eh, Carl? So presently, Professor Tinkle, presently, but... Surely you've had enough. Oh, oh, not enough for me. Here. My name is Carl. And I'm Margareta. Margareta. What a beautiful name. As Victor Hugo says, a woman's name should end on a vowel and sound like a benediction. I should like to improvise on it. Margareta. Margareta. What a charming compliment. Did you not feel me, Margareta, drawing you like a magnet from the moment we were introduced tonight, hoping you would come and lean on the piano so I could look up at you? Gottfried, our young couple have taken a fancy to each other. Your instinct is right, Johanna, but then it always is. Now I know the reason for this party. What a handsome <laughs> pair they make, Professor Kinkle. The very flower of German... Hush, everybody. We mustn't make them self-conscious. These first delicate approaches wither at a touch. <laughs> if we were to shout from the housetops, they wouldn't hear us. They are absorbed in each other. Oh, to be young. to my heart. It is the music of exile, Margarita. You too. And you? Yes. My brother and I were heart and soul in the 1848 revolution. We had a narrow escape. Then you're one of us. Yes. Exiles like you. Hmm. Poor little revolution that didn't prove a thing. Well, surely it accomplished something. Oh, yes. A lot of good progressive Germans were exiled. Or so disheartened they left their homeland. So, you and I meet here. Thank you, London, for introducing me to Margareta. <laughs> but how did you get involved in the revolution? Why, I was in school, the University of Bonn. Seems so long ago. At Cologne. Then you studied with the Herr Professor. That was my good fortune. Oh, you must be the young man who rescued Professor Kinkle from prison, saved his life. I owe him more than life. He gave me an ideal to live for. Freedom? For all men. He probably echoed a wish already in your heart. Strange, you should say that. Why, even when I was a child... I'll have to explain first. You see, my grandfather was a farmer in charge of a count's estate. So I happened to be born in a castle. Amusing, isn't it? I think it's charming. A revolutionary born in a castle. Oh, I wasn't born a revolutionary. Or was I? I'm not quite sure. I remember one little instance. 
probably of no importance. Oh, tell me anyway. Well, there was an old shoemaker in our village. Everybody called him Master George. I couldn't have been more than ten when one day I... Just a few more nails and your boots are finished, Carl. How can you mend them, Master George, when... Uh, when I'm so nearly blind? <laughs> uh, my fingers can see. I feel my way along. I'm like that. I feel things. What things? Well, there's a boy, for instance. I'm just getting to know him. Uh, what's his name? Adam. He's an orphan, works in our stable. Oh, yes. What is it you feel about him? I feel that he wants the same things I do. I think he'd like to go to school. And if you're wrong? He'll do what I tell him. Though the Count says I'm giving him ideas above his station. That's silly. Adam's a boy, like me. Why shouldn't he learn things? Perhaps the Count is right. And you shouldn't interfere with another person's life. You don't know what it may lead to. It's bound to be something better than cleaning out a stable. And uh, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I've got to feel it through. The Count has been good to you and your family. You might make things uncomfortable for your grandfather. I'd be sorry for that. And your mother? Oh, my mother. I'd feel terrible if she... You see, it costs something to put up a fight. But I've got to do this for Adam. You would, wouldn't you? What I would do and what you would do are two different things. But every man has a right to think for himself. Every man has a right to think for himself. For himself. Playing is a release for you, isn't it? I must find some outlet. Nothing as beautiful as music. There is love. Yes. There is love. Carl, you spoke of your family. My father is a school teacher. An intellectual, then? In a way, perhaps. But I was more influenced by my uncle Ferdinand. He was a disciple of Voltaire. Voltaire? Why, I grew up on him, Carl. Really? The old champion of personal liberty. Yes. I wholly disapprove of what you say. And, and will defend to the death your, your right, right to, to say, say it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Think of Voltaire saying that almost a hundred years ago. Why, it sounds like us. Margarita. Yes. Only, he must always have known where he was going. While you only know why? I'm afraid you've guessed it. But you're very determined. Well, I never want to be second when I can be first. You're a born leader. I see it in your eyes. And when I look into your eyes, your beautiful eyes. <laughs> you should have heard my mother just before I had to go to Rastatt. You know, I joined the Revolutionary Army in 1848. So you left the university? Yes. It was Germany's great opportunity. And mine. It certainly seemed to be, anyway. Well, Metternich had fled from Austria, and the Second Republic had been established in France. And our Germany had granted the people a constitution. Not all of the people, Margarita. The working man had no rights at all. So, Professor Kinkel inspired a lot of us students to get into action. You must have hated to give up your career. The search for freedom is my career. Did you realize how dangerous it really was? Well, I can't say we weren't warned. But my mother called me in one day and said, My son, I hear that the Prussians are marching on Rastatt now. Yes. I promised Professor Kinkel I'd go. I'm taking Adam with me. Adam, only your servant. He couldn't save you. But if you can't get back, I must take that chance, Mother. It may mean prison. Yes. Very well, my son. Here is your sword. Take it and use it with honor. Well, Adam, we'll know in a few moments what it is to face a firing squad. Hmm. At least we... we die together, Master Carl. You might have escaped. And, and leave you, sir? <laughs> How could I face your mother? Oh, if only I hadn't fallen asleep. Oh, I did my best to waken you, sir. Soldiers have slept before and found the enemy upon them. Well, you, you'd worked all night long. That's no excuse. I, I think they're coming.
coming for us, Master Carl? Yes. They're coming for us. Follow me, prisoners. Any notion where they're taking us, Adam? Outside the town, sir. Uh, stick close to me. I have an idea. Escape? I know the countryside well. Well, what about that hedge? It covers the entrance to the sewer. Now, quick, sir, this way. <laughs> Take it to the hedge until the others pass, Master Coward. Seems to have missed us. Oh, thank heaven. Amen. Oh, now, this sewer leads directly to the Rhine. Here's the entrance. What luck! One of the old brick sewers. And nearly five feet high. Here. I'd better go first. There. Now, it's deeper here. Be careful, Master Carl. Be careful. about three hours now. Yeah. Walking, walking humpback makes it seem longer. Uh, how, how's your strength holding out, sir? I'm not done for yet, Adam. Uh, do I, do I hear rain? Sounds like, yes, it's pouring down. And the way the water's beginning to come in, we'll soon be able to swim. If it fills up, we'll drown or be washed right into the rain. No. Oh, there's sure to be a grating at the end. Oh, look out for the rat. Uh, this rain ought to make our getaway easy. If we reach the river, water's rising awfully fast. Oh, Master Carl. Oh, save your energy, Adam. Don't talk. Excuse me, sir. I only met... Look, that's light ahead. Oh, my God. We'll have to go back, Master Carl. disappointment that must have been. Perhaps I shouldn't tell all this to a sensitive girl like you. No, please go on. I wish everyone could know what it cost to fight for freedom. Well, when we got back to the other end of the sewer, we hid in the loft of a small barn. We expected to creep out to find food at dusk, but as we were about to start down the left... Don't go down, Master Carl. I hear Prussians. We'll have to lay low. Until we know what they do. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A poor shelter, but it must serve. This is enemy territory. The farmers will poison our horses unless we set guard. Orderly. Yes, sir. Bring in the horses. Yes, sir. Tonight you will keep watch. Yes, sir. I'll send someone to relieve you in the morning. Oh, oh, oh. By right, we should have searched this place. Oh, oh. This door is the only way in or out. There's no window in the hayloft? No, I, I noticed as we rode up. Well, fortunately, it's only a week's stay. I guess we can put up with it. Well, we can't get out tonight, sir. We'll try in the morning. These Prussians are so thorough, I'm afraid our chances are pretty slim. When, when they bring the other horses in, I may be able to slip out. You'd be shot at sight. But you can't live through it, sir. A week without food or water. Others have. So can we. Wait, 
Master Carl? <sighs> oh. And so begins the third day. How do you feel, Master Carl? Same as you, Adam. My throat's raw from the hay dust. Do you... Do you notice anything strange, sir? This silence? I believe they've gone. Gone? Oh, I... I feel so weak. Oh, I'll go down and get some food. Wait. They may not have gone very far. I'll bring up water from the trough of my hat. Water. A gift from God. Master Carl! Master Carl! Quiet, Adam. Here's an apple the horses didn't eat. Apple. Excellent. I'm coming down. Uh, be careful, Master Carl. Be careful. Ah, uh, there. Uh, now, drink the water first. Now, now eat, sir. Slowly. Thank you. Here's your hand. No, I, I want you to have it all. No, take it. No. I never thought half an apple would taste so good. Uh, on guard, sir. Blasted Prussians. Quartered on my farm. Here's a friend, Adam. The farmer. Who are you? Friends of Germany. You speak the right words, but you're dirty. Face is covered with stubble. No wonder. We came out of the sewer. We were trying to escape. We had to turn back. We've been hiding in the loft these three days. And they didn't think to look in the loft. We've had neither food nor water. Well, come, dinner's hot on the table. But is it safe for us to remain here? For a few hours. Then you must go. It's a criminal offense to harbor us. We were listed for execution. I'll risk it. I can't leave my farm to fight for the revolution. You fight by helping us. Tell me, can you lure away the guard at the other end of the sewer and remove the grating? Well, the Prussians like my home-brewed beer. If I can, what then? Have you a boat? My neighbor has. You can count on him. The fight must go on. Oh, Carl. Yes? Carl, that was wonderful. It was all for nothing. You were clever and brave. Where was I clever? Where was I brave? This much I'm sure of. I'll only be happy fighting to make the whole world free. I know, Carl. But tell me, how did you rescue Professor Kinkoff? Well, I had gotten to Switzerland. I was writing articles for the revolutionary papers in Germany. You're a writer, too? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm always writing. Or talking. So... Well, I heard Professor Kinkle was in prison in Germany. And you dared to go back? Oh, Carl. There are always friends to help. Unexpected friends. There was a turnkey at the prison who proved a friend. This way, sir. I have moved Professor Kinkle to a more comfortable cell. Very kind of you. Oh, it's the least I could do after failing you last night. You did your best? I'm only the turnkey in the prison, but a patriot, too. And one of the best. Why, without your help, we couldn't even attempt the rescue. There's too many guards about last night. Oh, here we are, sir. Carl? Uh, yes, Professor Kinkle. Talk quickly, sirs, while I keep watch. Well, this cell is on the side. Good, I have a plan. Carl, do not risk it again. You are too valuable to the cause, sir, to remain in prison. But it may mean both your lives if we fail. We won't fail tonight. Oh, sirs, it's not my life. I'd give that gladly. But my family, I, I can't sacrifice them. If you are caught, our comrades will see that your family is cared for. I believe you, sir. What is your plan? We must work fast. Professor? In the dark, I, I can't feel the rope. Here it is, sir. Firmly secured. Oh, I, I have it now. Oh, good. Here, let me help you through the window. Yes, yes, thanks. Oh, oh. oh there. there. Now, slide down yes. quickly, sir. Yes. Yes. I'm holding this end. Hurry, hurry. 
Hurry, sir, the guard. Uh, at last. We must run for it. Here, this doorway. Did he see our shadows? I don't think so. He would have fired. How long before we sail? An hour. My friends who've been hiding me have arranged everything. Good. We'll go first to Edinburgh, and then to London. After going through all that... No wonder Professor Kinkle is discouraged about Germany. Not only Germany. Here it is, 1852, and all over Europe the liberal movement is suppressed. The French Republic is gone. Mazzini fought in vain to unite Italy. Kosuth could not free Hungary. And here you are in London, Carl. Stranded. Useless. So you've given up the search for freedom. Oh, no. Never. Splendid. You know your destiny. Oh, yes. You haven't found the way to reach it, that's all. But you believe I will? From my heart. Thank you for giving me new courage. Margareta? Yes? This may be the moment I've waited for all of my life. And all of mine, perhaps. Tell me. There is room in your heart for me. Room for you. And for your dream, Carl. Then I can accomplish miracles. I feel that I'm waking from a sleep and rising refreshed and strong. I'll never doubt the vision again, for you will share it with me. Always. make plans. <laughs> you are a man of immediate action. If his lady provides the inspiration, her knight can do no less than act <laughs> upon it. A quick wit, too. <laughs> oh, Carl, you will be a great public speaker. I hope to be. And I want to write, too. Here in England, speech is free. England has been free for a thousand years. She does not need us. Then you must go where you are needed. We must go. You and I together, Margarita. Yes. Together. But Germany, who needs us most, has exiled us. But there is a nation growing up, young and strong and free. The United States? Yes. The American people rule themselves. They are free to live their lives and express their thoughts. A nation of destiny, Carl. Can we help to shape that destiny? We can. We will. this boy named Carl? This was Carl Schurz, great American patriot of German birth. In August of the year in which they met, 1852, Carl Schurz and his young bride, Margareta, sailed for New York. Did they realize their dreams? Well, how is this for accomplishment? Carl Schurz, friend of Abraham Lincoln and fighter with him for the abolition of slavery. Carl Schurz, Brigadier General in the United States Army. Carl Schurz, United States Senator. Carl Schurz, Secretary of the Interior of the United States of America. Carl Schurz, for whom Carl Schurz Park in New York is named. At all times, the fighter, the orator, the writer for the cause of justice and liberty. Did he ever see his beloved Germany again? Well, when he visited Germany in 1867, he was heaped with honors. This boy who had fled as an exile 19 years before. It takes a man with a sure sense of destiny, with courage far beyond the ordinary, and with an extraordinary cleverness to find his way through the dark and mysterious terrors of the journey to freedom. Carl Schurz was one of us, a typical American. We came this way.
With this 20th broadcast, the NBC University of the Air completes the first series of We Came This Way. The program will be resumed at a later date, which has yet to be announced. In the days that lie ahead, every American needs to know the facts about our struggle for a democratic way of life. To give you more information about the facts dramatized in this series, and to suggest further reading to you, NBC has prepared an especially written handbook. We shall be happy to send this interesting book to you on request. Send 25 cents to cover the cost of printing and mailing to We Came This Way, Post Office 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. That's a little complicated, so I'll repeat it again. Send to We Came This Way, Post Office 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. Tonight's program was under the direction of Homer Heck. Original music was composed by Dr. Roy Shield and conducted by Mr. Joseph Galicchio. Special piano facts by Franz Fowl. In tonight's cast, you heard Clifton Utley as narrator, Lorette Philbrandt as Margarita, and Vincent Pelletier as Carl. Others in the cast were Alma Platt, Catherine Payne, Ralph Camargo, Charles Eggleston, Gilbert Ferguson, Philip Lord, Tom Post, Fred Sullivan, and Leonard Smith. Remember to watch the radio column of your newspaper for the return of We Came This Way. This is the National Broadcasting Company.